Watch all episodes of Ice Pilots. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. Download Bailey now. This week, Here's on right down. No luck yet. the pressure's on Justin. Watch that gear pressure. When a landing gear mystery strikes on the DC-3. It's called a major. And record cold. It's the coldest winter in 22 years. Gets Joe fuming. They don't want to come out, just lay them off. They're all filled with hole. Just dump out. Out of your hats, boy. I was just on my way home, and uh, I got a call from uh, on the radio that uh, they were coming home with an uh, engine out. On the Yellowknife ramp, Mikey McBrien is in crisis mode. Let's watch out the passengers. Do you want them inside? Yeah, I'll bring them inside. The evening passenger flight is coming back with an engine problem. Oh, good. Yeah, we had that uh, DC-3 WIR uh, had a right-hand engine precautionary shut down. Just getting uh, the backup airplane ready to go. Just had an indication of oil pressure possibly acting up. So we did a precautionary shutdown, came down, back and landed. Get a, get a Mikey's truck or something ready to do a baggage shift. How many people are on there, do you know? 20 passengers are stranded until Mikey gets the backup DC-3 flying. And the temperature is plunging. Very rarely. The sked takes off and actually physically has to come back. Every pilot, rampy, and mechanic is here to make sure the passengers get back on their way. We got a de ice. We got to put the frost fighter in, and uh, we got to pull the pallet jack out and transfer the bags. But none of this hustle will matter if the backup plane isn't ready to fly. Yeah, get Joe. This plane's ready to fire up. The last time this happened, four years ago. The backup three was frozen stiff at the back of the ramp. That's a big aluminum block sitting in the, this harsh cold weather. The airplane's not prepared. And the boss, Buffalo Joe, wasn't happy. It's going to be hell to pay, guaranteed. But tonight. The backup's ready. We just got to warm it up for you. It'll be in here before you know it. Mikey was prepared. You know, last time this happened, it took us about an hour to get the backup ready. Now, we had the backup fired up in position before this airplane even got back, so we're doing pretty good. So now, it's all up to the crew. Pull that power cart, Matty. Just get it out of the way for now. You gonna go for bad end Oh, yeah. Okay. It was really like a fire alarm going off at a fire station. You know, everyone jumps into rescue mode. Mikey, you wanna grab that other elevator, that'd be awesome. You gotta get the airplane in the air, so all hands on deck. Are we loading the passengers? Graham, bring the pre-boards first. Thank you so much, everyone. That was pretty smooth. Everything went according to plan. The airplane was plugged in and warm. It's got in it, fired it up. Everybody did what they're supposed to do. And Hey, Dad. Yeah. Okay, PNR's done. Everyone, everything's done. How are the passengers? They're good. So by the time they were towed back, Justin had PNR running. Passengers were in the air within 40 minutes. That's good. Eh? Okay, buy my pizza then. Okay. The big thing now is to give that other airplane so I can get some engines. Okay. Okay, thanks, son. Bye. That's a lot different than what three or four years ago we got yelled at for <laughs> two hours straight. <laughs> we might be learning, eh? They've pulled tonight's flight out of the fire. <laughs> but there's a much bigger problem. As you can see, this is where the airplane lost all its oil. You had oil here on the side, and so it's puking all its oil out. <laughs> but I don't know why it came out there that much. 
I'll probably just pull it off and send it out. We have to send the engine out for overhaul to see exactly what happened. That means Buffalo will have to put its last spare engine on this plane. There are no more DC-3 engines if anything else goes wrong with the fleet. But Joe has a plan. Sitting 2,700 kilometers away. There's a DC-3 in Quebec. Uh, my father bought it two years ago. He knew eventually he's going to need some DC-3 engines, and it just happens that uh, we're going to need those engines sooner than anyone thought. And the fastest way to get them across the country is to fly the entire plane. But there's a catch. They need a pilot willing to fly a plane that hasn't been off the ground in seven years. And they just might have found him right next door in Ontario. Former Buffalo captain Devin Brooks. Crossfighters and Hermans, yeehaw. Justin called and he said he needed a beat up old DC-3 to go from Val d'Or to Red Deer. Free and easy, just like Arnie would say. Devin quit full-time work at Buffalo last summer and traded flying for farming. Moved down to Prince Edward County in Ontario. Really nice area, back to the family farm. A lot of history on this one. A lot of history. Over six decades of service, this DC-3, call sign QBC, has flown around the world, making three trips all the way to Antarctica. Truly a part of a bygone era, it's logged hundreds of its hours on skis. Pretty good shape. And this flight will be a first for Devin. I haven't personally hopped in planes that haven't flown in seven or eight years, but... Uh... Well, Ronnie, should we get some fuel, buddy? I'll get drunk. Oh, okay. okay. Mechanic Ronnie McBride is taking care of the basics. It needs a new set of seals. Seals are dried out. A plane in this condition would never even be allowed to fly under normal rules. But Buffalo has a special exception for transport, known as a ferry permit. So you fair. Well, we got power. That's good. Get her warmed up and time will tell. No checklist, so I guess it's going off memory. <laughs> He'll have another familiar face in the co-pilot seat. Hey, Audrey. Devin says let's pull the fence. We're going. Yeah. Audrey Marchand left Buffalo two years ago. Now she's flying for a local airline. So Audrey's working at uh, Air Quebec and that's right out of Eldor. So uh, Audrey got a few days off work. All the fuel caps and oil is all good, Audrey? Okay. Audrey jumped at another chance to fly a legendary warbird. It's a great aircraft, it's an awesome aircraft. The feeling is so different than on those little, tiny, faster aircraft. Unless you flew it, I don't think you can really feel and understand what's going on in DC-3, but it's so great, the feeling is just amazing. But on the Buffalo ramp, regular co-pilots like Tyler Sipos aren't quite so thrilled. You get an awesome trip like this that's across the country. And these are the types of trips that, you know, we look forward to that's rewarding for hard work during the winter time and all these sorts of things. And you get a girl that's quit Buffalo. Twice. Yeah, at least twice. And she gets to do the trip back with Devin. Just frustrating all around. Tyler's been getting more frustrated here and been looking for another job himself. I won't be here, right? Now. You say that every I know, tell me about it. <laughs> One day it'll actually be true. Tyler's hoping his days at Buffalo are almost over. And the crew in Quebec has to hope this relic is ready to make one last flight. In Val d'Or, Quebec, Devin Brooks is facing a major challenge. Piloting a DC-3 across the country, a patched together plane that's been stuck on the ramp for years. Before we left Val d'Or, the plane hadn't been in the air since 2006. Buffalo badly needs to salvage the engines. And that means making a 3,000 kilometer journey all the way to Buffalo's hangar in Red Deer, Alberta, in a plane that's ready for the scrapyard. Foxtrot, Quebec, Bravo, Charlie, radio. 
Bird taxi no, uh, be off one eight westbound. Just making sure everything worked that needed to work. But this flight is going to be strictly bare bones. That airplane didn't have any uh, intercom system, so it was a lot of flying around with half your headset off. And there was only one radio that worked, so you're hoping it didn't break. The instrumentation inside the airplane was no help. Devin's personal GPS might be the one instrument they can count on. You lose your GPS on that thing, we're in big trouble. Ronnie's done everything possible to make the plane flightworthy, but the crew is just waiting for something to go wrong. Barely two hours into the flight, Ronnie finds a problem. The one accumulator, it, it was leaking hydraulic fluid. The hydraulic system uses pressurized fluid to control many of the DC-3's most important moving parts. The hydraulic accumulator collects excess fluid from the pumps. The accumulator can then deliver an extra burst of pressure when it's needed for wing flaps, landing gear, and brakes. Sometimes it would leak real quick, then it would just drip, and then it would leak for another hour and a half. Ronnie needs to get a handle on the problem before the system bleeds out too much fluid. So Devin's making a stop in Geraldton, Ontario. Wheels might be down, but the plane still needs enough pressure for the wing flaps to cut its speed and the brakes to bring it to a stop. The plane's down safely but they've got to tackle their problem before they fly another mile. Okay, Ronnie, what do you want to do? I'm going to disconnect that accumulator. Hey, take it out of the system. We're going to count the line. Yeah, I just... So, I mean, it's going to chatter, but that's what's keeping all our dog food out there. We can't turn it off in flight? No. Nope. It's plumbed right into the system. Yeah. Flying without the accumulator could tax and strain the plane's pumps, and Devin won't have that extra blast of hydraulic power if he needs it in an emergency. Cross-threaded. That's why it's leaking under pressure. I just took it out of the system. The crew needs the system to hold. They still have over 2,000 kilometers to fly in this old plane, and no idea what might go wrong next. In Yellowknife, the cold snap is blasting Buffalo hard. And tonight, the hangar is falling victim to the cold. If the alarm didn't go off, by the time maintenance shows up in the morning, the hangar would be froze right up and cause hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of damage. Mikey and his brother Rod are facing a heating failure. Can you reset him? Yeah, but this one tripped off again. Where they both off? Yeah. I mean, it feels so cold in here, eh? Tonight, the temperature's slated to plunge to minus 50. There's two boilers. Both boilers failed. Without heat overnight, Buffalo will be crippled in the morning. It's empty, eh? The technicians found the problem. The heating oil supply couldn't keep up with the demand. Well, yeah. The so fuel supply from outside wasn't completely open, so it ran fine when it had low demand for boilers. If it was, if it was minus 10 and the boilers run for five minutes every hour, there's enough fuel to supply it. As soon as they had to run for an hour, yeah. it ran out. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 
They've tackled one problem. The hangar will be warm tomorrow. Now the concern is the planes. It's cold, it's like minus 40. So co-pilot Graham Ferguson is battening down. I'm just trying not to freeze. Think warm thoughts. They're saying it's the coldest winter in 22 years. Without electric heaters in these engines, the backup sked will be frozen solid by morning. Make sure your engines are extra nice and wrapped up, nice and toasty. But no amount of precaution can really fight against the kind of cold that's coming. Nothing likes to work at minus 40, so... The next morning, the cold isn't letting up. Not as tight as that one. And mechanic James Dojak has made a discovery. We need to get better ceramics in here. Graham's ceramic heaters weren't enough. What we got here is a frozen backup sked machine. So we're trying on thought right now, just in case PNR goes all shit this afternoon. James has heat blowing into the engines, but thawing them out so the props move freely is going to take hours. When you put the ceramic heaters in the engine, it circulates warm air around the cylinders to keep the oil from solidifying. These heat, these ceramic heaters don't produce enough heat and the oil congeals and it gets all like tar. You don't want that. Well, those new ceramics we got, they're fucking junk. Well, okay, no deck. All the ceramics that we have are junk. <laughs> My farts are warmer than those heaters. <laughs> and on the other side of the ramp, there's another problem and another frozen plane. There's a power cable that runs out to a junction box, and uh, someone must have drove over it and unhooked out the junction box, cutting power to the airplane, and turn freezing it up. As the main DC-4 co-pilot, it's up to Graham to keep the plane ready to fly. This thing was leaking too, eh? But Graham is busy fighting the cold at home. Uh, Graham, phone up Graham. The reason he's not out here is pipes burst at his house. Not only is the cold affecting Buffalo Airways, it's affecting all the element. This is where the water line comes in. It's all frozen me. My hot water tank ruptured. I, I gotta take care of this stuff first. I mean, I put in 56 hours in the last five days for Buffalo. Uh, I'm pretty sure, you know, it, uh, this is not an unreasonable thing to be doing. What you're gonna to have to do is don't let anybody... But for Buffalo Joe, the frozen plane comes before Graham's plumbing. I never saw him out now with a, with a yeah, frost fighter. I'll go call Graham right now. I wanna see them. They don't wanna come out, just lay them off. Give them an air tindy pass. You're just one day at a time, Graham. That's all I'm going to put you on notice one day at a time. Next time I pull your props, they're frozen. I won't be phoning you. You know, I got far too many of you guys. That's my problem. Well, you better handle it real quick. If I want that airplane this afternoon ready to go. Joe is pretty much like, you know, telling me he was going to fire me again over the phone. And if, if Joe fires me one more time one of these days, I might actually have to quit. <laughs> hey, Mike, if I get a hold of that. Sinkros, whatever his name is. Yeah. And if he can't help me, I'm, I'm not going to keep here after today. So dealing with the four falls to its other co-pilot, <sighs> Tyler Sipos. Winner's definitely here. A couple of its engines, these ones are <laughs> stiff. Things are busting, things are freezing. People are sick. I'm sick and tired and cold. And the frost fighter heaters. These ducks are fucking useless. Are amping up his frustration. The friggin' things are bent to shit, so you can't even get them in properly. You're wasting heat here. They're all fucking filled with holes. Wasting heat everywhere. Fucking dumb. I'm trying to fiddle with it at friggin' minus 40. What a fucking shit show. Ah. In Red Deer, Alberta, Devin Brooks is making his delivery. 
For a plane that hadn't flown since 2006, like, whew, that plane performed really, really good and beyond my expectations. After the pit stop, his hydraulic system is holding and the DC-3 has given him no more problems. Whenever you get a call for a ferry flight, you're usually expecting worse than we actually had. That airplane performed great. Now, this retired plane will be cannibalized to keep Buffalo's fleet flying. As soon as it got to Red Deer, I took both engines off, and they're going to be shipped up to Yellowknife shortly. And Devin's on his way to Yellowknife, too, for some extra contract work. Right now is the busy time, so they uh, wanted me to come up, and that's no problem. Go to pick up Devin Brooks from the airport. I don't know how much he's going to like it. I guess it's almost minus 40 with the wind chill. It's a chilly one. Welcome back to the Arctic, Devin. <laughs> oh, boy, that wakes you up getting out of that room. I can tell you that It's a cold smell. Adam, you pot liquor. How you doing, Paul Walker? Good. Don't get me all grease now. Yeah, well, you've been away from us for so long, you need no, to get back. No, actually. I had fixed combine a couple of times. That's just dirty. Ooh, combine, that's sweet. Oh, shit. More sophisticated than these things. <laughs> so far, the normally cranky Devin seems happy to be back in the fold. It's surprising how less grouchy you get when you don't deal with 30 below for six months. <laughs> I'm not grouchy anymore. <laughs> but it's already colder than 30 below. You got a warmer jacket than that, eh? Oh, yeah. And there are more problems for Devin and Buffalo ahead. I got my blankie. Blankie. But Joe won't be around to deal with them. He's heading down to see the new engines in Red Deer. But he's left something behind. How was it? The old man shoes. Huh. He must have left these on the wing or something. Hear that? He threw them at somebody. With Joe away, Chief Pilot Justin Simley is flying tonight's sked to Hay River. And he'll have a very special passenger on board his baby boy. Mine and Jamie's son, Niall, uh, had been born two weeks before, so he was heading down to Hay River to visit his grandparents. Okay, clear left and ahead. Clear right and ahead. Christine Povey will be Justin's co-pilot for this flight. Let's get the tower call here, Miss Christine. You're on my tower, Buffalo 168 is a Charlie. Clean the cowlings, clean yeah. the windows, oh, yeah. clean the seats. Clean the headrest, clean the armor. Back in the summer, Christine wasn't sure she could stick it out at Buffalo. Like, I can't waste my time on a ramp. I'm already falling apart. <laughs> Welcome to my life. At that time, I was, I was pretty close to being done. But, you know, the stubborn part of me refused to give up. Lineups are complete. We are ready to go. We're out of here. Let's roll. Now, Christine has toughed it out and earned the spot of regular sked co-pilot. 30 inches. Give me a shot of gear pressure, Christine, if you don't mind. And V2. Here up. Christine's doing a, a nice job. She flies well, and she's coming along very nicely on the DC-3, and that's great to see. Tonight, Christine's about to face a whole new kind of challenge. Okay, set the friction there for a sec. And you'll have control. All right, I have control. Thanks. Do you want your carb heat cold uh, before touchdown or on touchdown? Before touchdown. Eh? 40 minutes later, Christine and Justin descend toward Hay River and unexpected trouble. Good evening, Hay River. It's uh, Buffalo 168. Landing gear is coming down. Gears on route down. No lock yet. With his family back in the cabin. Don't forget the lock, eh? I will not forget the lock. Thanks. 
Justin's got a big problem with the plane's landing gear. What's going on here? Watch that gear pressure. Bleeding off like crazy. Without enough hydraulic pressure to the gear, the wheels won't lock down. Oh, geez, that's not very good. No lock yet. And Hay River is dead ahead. What's going on? Oh, geez. On final approach to Hay River, with his family on board, Justin Simley is fighting a serious problem with his landing gear. That's not good. The gear is controlled by hydraulic fluid. The engines power two pumps, which provide extra pressure to force down the wheels and lock them there for landing. If either pump fails, the remaining one should still deliver enough of a pressure boost. But tonight, somehow, both pumps are failing to deliver. What's going on here? Calgills are neutral, eh? Yep. Check my fluid quantity, please, Christine, there, right now. You're half full. It defies all odds that both pumps could fail at once, but that's exactly what seems to be happening. Justin's only option, pump up the pressure himself by hand and hope that's enough. Give it another shot there. No lock yet. Pressure's up, green light, positive lock, three set, and indicate. That's good. They've got the gear down in time. And the passengers safely on the ground. So give me the thumbs up when you're on the wing tip. And then I'll shut down. You immediately put the gear pins in, okay? Deal. Thank you. The landing gear pins are a standard precaution against a plane collapsing when it's on the ground. Are the pins in? But tonight, they're especially important. It was great. With the plane secure, Justin can turn briefly back to his family. Little man, all covered up. Yep. Slept through it. Did he? Yep. Caught up a little bit. Awesome. But not for long. Awesome. Tom? Now he has to tackle the mystery of what exactly happened to his plane. Right now, I'm just looking for any hydraulic fluid because it's supposed to fly home again, first thing in the morning. It's just virtually impossible to fail two hydraulic pumps at the same time on a DC-3. Like, it never, it just never happens. This is kind of a weird one. Right, I can pump the system pressure up manually, but I can't get any system pressure from the uh, engine German hydraulic pumps, either one, so we need maintenance to have a look at it. <laughs> Too big a mystery for tonight. So he calls Yellowknife to request a backup plane and a team of mechanics. Can you ask him to bring a case of hydraulic fluid as well? Okay, buddy, thanks. Early the next morning in Yellowknife, the crew preps the backup. And Devin Brooks oh, is back on? in action. Look at the clock, 5.30. Rescue mission. We're taking a few engineers down, taking another skid machine down. We'll pick up the passengers. 34 below zero and 43 with the wind chill. And believe it or not, it's colder in Hay River. Sounds like fun, doesn't it? Don't you want this job? Mechanics Travis Dyson and Chuck Adams are heading down to try and get the hydraulics back online. Ready for the adventure? Never. And they're puzzled by Justin's report. I'm thinking, I don't know, man. I've never really seen the hydraulic pump fail. And they're saying they're both failed. Are you 
guys. While the passengers board Devon's DC-3, let's just see what this hydraulic level is first. Chuck tries to solve his hydraulic riddle. My crystal ball was burnt out years ago. My magic wand doesn't even sparkle anymore. <laughs> I got like a couple thousand hours by these things on that one hydraulic pump. Right? I know, I don't see them quitting off, but I would say it's probably right. Now we're gonna change that pump. It's hard to believe both pumps have died at the same time, but Chuck needs to eliminate the possibility by changing at least one of the pumps. Where else are you gonna start? Yeah, are they both gone? I don't know. So, we gotta start there. We're not in no rush, are we? Me and you? We're always in a rush, Chuck. <laughs> There's a truckload of priority freight that needs to fly to Yellowknife, including medical supplies for the hospital. So what we'll do is we'll get two ducks here, yeah. Give me some heat for now. I gotta get some in the wheel well. But in this weather, just getting the engines warm enough to work on is becoming a challenge. Does this fing thing work? Yeah, it looks like they all fing burnt the same spot. Cord's fing. Right now, we can't even get the cord to work. Got another cord? Yeah, it was cold. It was minus 35 on the ground in hay that morning, so, uh, you know, working outside isn't comfortable. It's cold! Oh, your hands. Well, if you lose one, it's okay. Is that new one ready? Yeah. Okay, hang on. Tighten that up with your wrench so it's not leaking all over the place. Pull the pump back. Put this one on, and then we'll have to turn the fitting. Get her. Get her, girl. Stop fing notch. The new pump is on. Now they run the engine to see if it'll actually send pressure to the gear. Nope, it's warm. Still not seeing no pressure. No, the one's showing zero. Yeah, that ain't no good. So we changed the pump, and nothing changed. Oh, get this. So there's a problem in the system. This is a much bigger issue than just broken pumps, and it's impossible to fix on a frozen ramp before the cargo needs to move. What are you thinking? Well, we don't want to be here all day because we can be around all day. So we got to call for another airplane to come pick up the freight. That's right. Hey, buddy. Hey, Justin. <sighs> Mikey and Buffalo are running out of options. Buffalo's DC-3 call sign LFR taxis into Hay River on a rescue mission. The LFR is here. He's picking up the freight. All the Kingland Ford stuff. Stuff for the hospital. LFR will deliver the crucial cargo stranded after the hydraulic failure in the other DC-3. What the f*** it be? I don't know. Something going on here is strange. Chuck didn't want to pull the whole entire hydraulic system apart on the ramp with the temperature being as it was in Hay River, very, very cold. It's cold here! And the brutal temperatures are making every part of this job more difficult. It's not too easy. So Chuck makes a call. I hate cold. I'm sick of it. We're popping a skip from Yellowknife. Why not take it into a hangar and do it someplace nice and warm and figure out the problem? But with the unsolved hydraulic problem, the crew can't risk raising the gear back up. And they'll need to take another special precaution. Back with this airplane, with the gear pins in, gear down. The pins are usually a backup to hold the wheels down once the plane is parked. Pump this up again before you leave. Yeah, good idea. Right on, brother. 
Sir. I'm dead. Today, the gear will be down and the pins will be in for the entire flight. 30 inches. Check. Air throttles 43. V1. Check. And V2. Good. Sleeve the gear down. Okay. Buffalo can't afford to be down a DC-3. One power. One power. They need to get this plane home and figure out the problem fast. As Justin and Christine close in on Yellowknife, they face a big question. Yeah, open her a little bit there. See if she'll come up again. Okay, close it out now. See what she does. Absolutely nothing. The gear pins were never intended to take the full impact of 17,000 pounds banging down onto the runway. But if the gear lock doesn't hold, those pins are all they've got. <sighs> the landing gear has held out, but Buffalo can't waste a minute. The wounded plane heads directly inside. Now Chuck has to find the source of the problem and get the hydraulics pumping again. You're gonna tear the whole hydraulic system apart. He finds evidence everywhere. We got contaminated fluid, contaminated filters, Pressure regulator is not working properly, and the relief valve wasn't working properly. Dirt has spread throughout the system, contaminating and clogging it up. There's a little crap in there, man. And Chuck's facing a mountain of work. Oh, I'll be another day on this. There could be a piece of dirt in the pressure valve or pressure relief valve, pressure regulator, so I'm changing it all. It's called a major overhaul. He'll have to dig deep into Buffalo's museum of stockpiled parts. January 1977, cure date. Jesus Christ. 1994 overall. That ain't too bad, eh? See, the problem is, if I take this apart, am I gonna remember how it all goes back? This could be a disaster. Jesus Christ, which way did this go now? I think like this, eh? Oh my God. Hope that's right. Now we're gonna start putting it all back together. Hopefully it works. The grounded plane should be back flying soon, but all these problems with their flagship DC-3s will soon have the McBrien's looking for a modern replacement. So I do 780. Do 800. Point your toes. We're Point going in deep. Oh, okay. The McBrien's are bidding online for a plane that could change the face of Buffalo. Be on here, With a turbo DC-3 up for auction, it's due in just over an hour. You know, a turbine DC-3 doesn't come on the market that often, and uh, when it does, we have to jump on it. Converted turboprop DC-3s could be the answer to a string of problems with their aging radial fleet. Turboprop models keep the legendary toughness of the original plane with the modern turbine engines that are 25% faster, have more range, and run on jet fuel instead of the scarce avgas. Wow, that's sure nice. Joe got a look at one in Yellowknife last year and started thinking. I'm kind of jealous, I'd like to go fly that thing. $900,000. And then you're gonna quit? No. Mikey's got an itchy finger and a lot of his father's money on the line. 
ready? Well, you want to wait for dad or what? If we buy it for 99000 that's a deal, ain't it? You ready? Well, you got to wait for dad because... What was... He's got less than the Simpsons episodes worth of time to get here. I just, $900,000. <laughs> 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 Is it? He's coming. Is he? You said that. I just bid 900000 and we'd be no bid. Well, hit nine fifty. see what it is. All right. There's nothing Joe loves more than an airplane auction. Look. It's, it's over a million now. One million, five hundred bucks. Well, we bid her. We bid her. Well, watch it only end up there with ten million, five hundred bucks. <laughs> We're high bidder. What? At one million, ten thousand? Yeah. Oh, maybe no bid. Yeah, hit one point one, see what it does. One point one two. Yeah, yeah, okay, put that in, Mike. You paid some. You know what, my father's a gambler and that's how he built his company. Oh, we be no bid. Huh? Is that 1.12? Okay, we're past our fing plate here. Don't f around no more. Huh? Not airplane. What if it has a cracked spar? We don't know that. It could have a fing hundred thousand dollar fing repair to do on it. Go one and a quarter? One point one point two two five zero. He never heard a word I said. Eh? I know I missed you too. I'd say put 1.5 now. You say? If you got it for 1.5 million, could you be happy? No, because I have to go pay for it, son of a bitch. Even with the recent DC3 trouble, Joe has his limits. Oh. The chat. <laughs> it's at 2.2 million right now. What? Oh, well, we're out. Jesus. Buffalo will have to keep relying on its flagship piston pounders. I don't know what to say, brother. I gotta win a lot of f out of here. After three days of work, Chuck and the mechanics have overhauled the hydraulic system on the latest casualty. Are we gonna fly this today or? Yeah. Because I'll probably go along with you. Just make sure nothing goes wrong. And it's time for the test flight. Pressure's up, green light, positive block, reset. Okay, okay. Landing gear is coming down. The signs look good. All they need now is a clean landing. Four set indicating. Right on, strike on. And a thumbs up from the mechanic. Well, she's like the day I came off the assembly line back in the 40s. Good to go. So for now, Buffalo's vintage fleet will keep on flying.